158 to play here in the game. Zoltan Tope has done a good job coming off the bench. He's done a tremendous job to come up with some key saves here as he faces one of the hottest forwards in the league, Damir Haramina. Just a tremendous performance by Tope. Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to our Soccer's Overtime Legends Series. We continue and we have reached a great destination as I welcome in one of our Soccer's Hall of Famers. His number one hangs in our rafters. Zoli the goalie, Zoltan Toth, is our guest today on Soccer's Overtime on video and on podcast. Zoli, it is so great to see you, my friend. Normally, we'd, be, we'd already be hanging around uh, some arena by now, but it is wonderful uh, to see you and to have you join us as a guest today. Yeah, thank you, Craig. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to be here because uh, just recently I had a knee replacement, joint replacement surgery. So you can imagine, you know, I go through the Spain, what created those days, you know, yeah. in our soccer. And soccer, naturally, you know, if you don't get hurt in this game, you did not play the game, you know, seriously. Because before or later, you know, you will get hurt. Look at Craig, look at Jungu, look at Sag all of the big ones, even Julie, everybody gets some injury if you play the game, you know. No. It's not so easy to survive healthy. So when you think back, and you know, we've been doing this, as you know, we, we've been covering uh, the, the history, the great history of our club over the last couple of months, a lot of highlights on our social media feeds, uh, and these interviews, these Legend Series interviews, and, and a lot of it is to kind of get to the core of the question of, of the MISL and what made it great. So just to kind of start off on that, we're not gonna dig all the way to the bottom of the hole on the first question, but just to kind of start on that, when you just think about it, when you kind of conjure up the heyday of the MISL, what's the first thing that comes to mind? You know, um, this MISL was, was one of the sport what all of the professional players can play off season. When the outdoor season was over, here comes indoor. And I tell you what, when you play this game indoor, it's so exciting. You know, the character is, the game is so fast so many goals, so many action, you cannot get bored. If you go miss five minutes because of you late for a game, you miss the first two goals. Now, yeah. this sport is like that. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, when we, we play, make sure that uh, fans show up on time, you know, they let the line in because, you know, they've been missing the first two goals. And, you know, this is when it starts to happen. So I think that was for me, give me a living, yeah. A great organization because that time all of these cities had a, well, especially in the north, there was, you know, indoor was winter sport. We played right. in winter time. It was a major sport. We competed with uh, uh, hockey. Uh, you know, I played in New York, Long Island. The Islanders were gay. Yeah. You know why is my name is Zoli, the goalie? No. So the Islander had two goalies, uh -huh. Billy Smith. And Roland Melanzo, they called him Rolly the goalie. Ah, here I go, Zoli. Of course, I became a Zoli the goalie. So, you know, the fans gave me this name. And, you know, we competed. Of course, they won championships, you know, you five are, times. Yeah. We won championships five times. I was lucky to be there and, you know, play the game. Absolutely. Uh, now, what some people may know, may not know, about your personal history. Of course, you, you grew up in Hungary. Uh, you were a great player there. You, you played top league there. You represented your country. And then uh, you had an opportunity to defect and come to the United States. And I'm just curious, uh, you know, thinking obviously so, so many years back, but, but, but what went into that decision, how difficult it might have been for you and, and, and what, what led you down that path? Yeah, I would say if you really want to know, I'm writing a book. So, uh -huh. you know, writing a book. I told to Julie, he has to do it too. Because it's so colorful, my life. I won't change anything. I'm yeah. telling you. I played in Wipesh. But that was a very first division club. And I'm very proudly announced. They choose me like all-time team goalkeeper. Wow. In Wipesh. So I won two championships. I see my father won three there. And, you know, there were big goalkeepers who were coaching me. But they chose me because I did not lose just one game in two years. Wow. And I had luck because 
politically, I was against you know, this communism. So yeah. I was very looking at to the West, the freedom, what you have here, the life, you work hard, you can make it. And not in those countries, you know, they will take away your um, achievements. So just like did to my dad, after three championships, the guy comes in, he says, Dury, don't you see your name is not over your chair? He tried to change. After three championships, so they throw him out like that. It yeah. would never happen in, in the States. At least you give me a number one. <laughs> <laughs> Retire or something. You know, I, I enjoyed it. I, I would retire here like that. Yeah. Hundred times than over there, just, you know, like my dad, dad was. And I played the political games. I was very happy to beat at the Soviet Union from European Cup with yeah. Hungary and beat at Romania from Olympics. <laughs> so I played those two games. I'm very happy I still could do. But the military service put me in an in a army that was bad. That's why Jungle ended up in the United States because he escaped from it. Yeah. I don't wanted to go. I was an engineer already in telecommunication. I was in a, a national team goalie and they put you in an army for one and a half year. It was horrible. After then I get hurt in Bilbao in a, a Champions League uh, year. So I did my shoulder, left shoulder, one of the same. And a week later I was in the army. Oh man. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you, you understand? So I was thinking, oh no, one day my chance will come. So we played in Spain against Barcelona, Flamingo, and, and Cadiz. Yeah. And from Cadiz, Spain, I escaped to the United States with a team called Pennsylvania Stoners. <laughs> Very bad name. <laughs> As he told them because he was playing for them, you know, and I was a goalie then, you know. They, so I came with the H2 visa. I'm not illegal. Yeah. I came legally playing soccer to the United States. I'm very proud of it. Absolutely. Now, your first uh, indoor big break team, and of course, it's one of the most historic teams. Uh, and you already referenced it right before we hit record, the New York Arrows, uh, that won the first four league championships uh, of, of the uh, MISL and had a number of the uh, outdoor Rochester Lancers from the NASL, which included a 17-year-old kid named Bronco Sagoda, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, well, for one year, Julie V. But of course, and you already mentioned him, Steve Jungle, the Lord of all indoors, the greatest indoor scorer of all time. And while you played with him both in San Diego and in New, in New York, I think it would be fair, and I think you would agree to say that his time in New York was one of the old, it was kind of like Gretzky and Edmonton in hockey, you know, just this, this singular scoring sensation. What made Jungle so great? So, I have to tell you something. Jungle was great in Hajduk Split in Yugoslavia too, those days. Yeah. Yugoslavia broke up, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he came to the United States, he escaped from a, a military. Now I end up in New York because Dan Popovich was Yugoslavian and he find him, he is escaping. So he find him and br brought him to the club. I was watching these games in Pennsylvania because they suspend me for two years to playing outdoor soccer. So I was working in a Ross Bike Corporation making bicycles because right. I was an engineer. And I, I was dreaming about one day I would play this game. Indoor soccer was not under uh, ruling of FIFA, the Federation right. of Football Association. So it is my avenue. So I went down one of the game. I saw in Philadelphia, um, um, New York Arrows play against uh, uh, Philadelphia, and there was Julie V. And he said, hey, I know who you are. Listen, you can play in this league. We need a goalie. He was on Shep Messing, was my other goalkeeper mate, who was very famous, big, yes. big time. And he said, come down to practice and show. And, you know, we need that one more goalie. Enzo Di Pieda was a good goalie. He later ended up in, in, in Kansas City. So I went down to practice. I scored a goal. And I was a goalie. <laughs> I said, you know, I want him. So here I go. I go to uh, uh, John Luciani, who was our owner, a fantastic owner. He loved the game. He had lots of money. He owned Fort Lee. And, him and Bernie Rode in the Baltimore had always fight. So mm -hmm. he wanted a very strong team, winning team. So I go in, you know, they say, he's in a meeting. I go with my lawyers, he smoke a cigar. He just ask one thing, how much? <laughs> Richie say 40 grand. See, Richie write up a check. 
poof, that was my conversation. I was free from uh, FIFA. I was free from everything, and I was ready to sign with the New York Arabs. So we were a United Nation, you know, ah. United Nation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brazilian Renato Chilla, uh, Argentine Michia, Luis Alberto, a player. You know, you see in a, in a video this unbelievable midfield. Then uh, Americans, Doc Lawson, you know, uh, Nicky Megalidis. Um, you know, we had we had players who were who were good, strong, quality players indoor. Yeah. And you know, you you get Jungu Seg Segota. We, we called him Branco Baby because mm -hmm. he was so young. <laughs> but he shot. He don't show the shot. He just move it, move it. Boom. And and Craig, I don't wanna die till I see one more time Julie V, Branco, and Jungu playing tic tac too. Oh, I told you yeah. the TikTok to Yes, yes. They play the ball, you score, I score, he score. Went around, everybody was on the ground, all of the defense. Somebody scored the goal, he felt bad, he ruined the game. You know, and everybody, <laughs> ah, you know, this. <laughs> so that was a TikTok. I want to see it one more time. No matter what team will do this, this is unbelievable. The best, you know. So I enjoyed the indoor soccer. No, absolutely. So I, one of the questions I had, because, again, right, we're talking about the history of this league. And the MISL had this glorious 14-year, 14, 15-year history. And then it went away. One of the things that has been explained to me was that one of the things that hurt the league was that they could never get a big market team to truly stick. Mm -hmm. And amazingly, the MISL started with the biggest head start you could have in this situation. The biggest city, New York won the first four titles. So, you know, if, if anything, uh, the arrows should have been the toast of the league. Why do you think it didn't work as well off the field as it worked on the field? Okay. One is business. How long you can deduct all of the expenses, you know? Yeah. One. So, you know, John has to sell the club. And two, we, you know, we are internet TV. National television, the, the advertisement that pay the bills. You yeah. take away the national TV from NBA, MLB, uh, uh, NFL, they will fall. So we lost a bargain. There was uh, our foreman was a uh, MISL um, president, uh, commissioner, and he he tried to bargain for more money with ESPN, and uh, they wanted to give us some million, couple of millions to televise the games, but we wanted more. And we end up, we lost the whole deal, and we end up paying a million dollars just to uh, show the game. So, you know, I mean, this is like an elevator. So exciting games, much better than hockey. You can see that better than a puck, you know, flying yeah. around on the ice. And uh, the excitement is there, you know, the show we made, you know, look at Baltimore, you know, just go out, take, take half hour, you know, to go out to the stadium. Because the whole thing was small. You can't even see the other team because, you know, they, they overdo it. And the fans are into the game. So that, that made it to come back to the game and enjoy it. And it was a very exciting game. When you're leading uh, five to two and you have still 10 minutes to go, you may not win the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, that team always can come back. Like a big ass game was sent to the San Vichita game, the semifinal. I was behind Sobo's net and watching all of the, you know, the scores, you know, what the St. Louis just did. Unbelievable game. And they won it in overtime, should I So, you know, these this games cannot be in Ador. Ador may you have one nothing and then passing back to the goalie hardly times, you know, it's, it's still the game, you play the corners. Not so exciting. Yeah. The controversy, the game, the, the quality of the playing. You know, that was making indoor soccer, what I love. Now, one thing that was important at that time as well, I think you'd agree, Zoli. So I've asked all, every one of our player legends when I've brought you guys on the same question. I'm trying to ask every guy mm -hmm. the same question because we live in a very different time now. Yeah. And today we have a vibrant Major League Soccer environment. We even have a second tier, a third tier of, of United States professional soccer. We've got that national TV deal for, for, uh, for outdoor. And as such, a guy like you with impeccable national team credentials, I mean, you would be a superstar in MLS uh, if you would come at, you know, at the same age that you did. In other words, if we could just time machine you 
from 1978 and pop you into 2020 MLS, you'd be a superstar in that league. Uh, and it makes me wonder if you had a big time outdoor league like that in the, in the, in the United States. And I know the first two years, we know that suspension part, but would you have even looked at indoor soccer? You, you may say that, you know, but you see the seasonal, so you're not playing winter time. And those guys, when the season is off, they don't do nothing. You know, then they will be out of shape. You know, they may, you know, changing, you know, teams, who knows. But as you see, look at uh, LAFC. They're making such a show before a game. Yeah. In the show. They, the, the, the fans dancing already. You know, the, 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 the introduction. The, you know, the, the blood flying all over, you know, the area. Oh, and yeah. Eagle. And, you know, every, every time when they score a goal, they boom, you know, something happens. That means you wake up even if you sit, you cannot jump in the air and enjoying the goal. Now, well, how many goals happening? You know, how many back passing happening? You know, all kind of stuff. I would speed up the game a little bit more to have more, more goals because when 0-0 zero, zero is a game, you don't see 0-0 zero, zero game in basketball. Right. Nobody makes a basket. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, no? Or indoor soccer, there's no such a thing. You know, right. zero, zero. You know, you have to, four, four is average, you know, and you have to play very well in goal because it's so fast, they speed up so fast front of the goal. There's no such a thing. Somebody shoot the ball and goes out in a corner flag, you know, and like outdoor. I played outdoor games. I enjoyed it. I played in Spain, played in South America. We beat everybody. Right. But I'm telling you, if you play indoor soccer, so big ones coming in, you know, it's very difficult very fast. You can be a superstar if you do it. Maradona would be, or Messi would be a, a, a super, super star, you know, yeah. because they have that touch. Ronaldinho started indoor. And all of those players who played indoor, and they go out there later, they have that touch, they have that vision, how to play the game, so they think ahead. And, you know, this is how they're creating a big chance. It's a beauty of the game. That's what I love. Now, when I've watched you play, uh, and as we talked about with all of this, you know, best of that we're doing on, on social media, I'm getting this chance. I mean, a lot of my days is spent watching these old games. Uh, the thing that really stands out to me about Zoltan Tov is athleticism, that you had a, a ranginess about you. You had longer legs than the average keeper. You'd be mm -hmm. bouncing down on the balls of your toes when mm -hmm. the ball's in the, in the zone, but you'd have that ability to spring out of your crouch, mm -hmm. uh, Spidey Man-like, and, and just mm -hmm. get to any corner that you needed to do. Of course, you had the great arm. Of course, you had the great reflexes. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that ranginess, that athleticism, uh, was that something you felt you relied upon during your career? Yes. You see, I practice more. That's easy. Yeah. So when I go out and play the game, I look at other team who was practicing more than me. You know, so think about my dad. My dad was training me and, you know, for, from junior teams all the way to the first team, to national team. Yeah. And even came out to United States in the soccer. He came out and trained me right here with uh, Ron Yuna. So I do the same thing with Chris. So yes. you can see, some identification right there because he's moving almost the same. He's fast with the good with the feet. He's very, you know, wise. He's catching the ball, not punching it, not giving you rebound. That's very important, I think. Yeah. You know, so what we're practicing mostly, you know, the catchings and, you know, positioning and stuff. So you can have to block those angles and, and do your best. Now, I'm tall. I was born for outdoor. Yeah. But before, I'm covering the goal. It's very hard. So when I'm coming out of the angle, I'm laughing. The ball will hit me, unless they pass it around. So there are control. I remember all of those games, so the winning ones, it's easy. I sleep well, but I always remember those games that I lost. Yeah. And that gives me a nightmare. And what I could do better, you know, like All-Star game, 1988, 89, you know, those, um, all-star games, what, what, uh, 30 seconds to go, how can you lose the game, you yeah. know? And if I can turn back the time, and I told this to Rally Swift and Chris, if the game is almost ending, you bet that you secure that ball, you know, just jump on it, let the, you know, and don't, don't want to throw the ball to Jungle or set up somebody, because it can backfire, it backfired on me. 
And I remember Aurelie Swift did the same thing. So he secured the ball at the end. So good advice, you know, because yeah. he didn't uh, you know, sleep like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I talk on a 40th uh, um, anniversary, you know, with the MISL guys in Las Vegas. And that was Kai Husky, you know. Yeah. And he scored the game winning goal in All Star game in Los Angeles. Well, Los Angeles was beautiful, full house, you know. The, um, so, in the overtime, he comes on a goal and he has the shoulder, you know. The shoulder showed me he will pass. Yeah. And I showed I show him this. He did this to me. <laughs> then he pushed it to the short post. I mean, Jesus, you know. The guy was wide open. Why don't you pass the ball? You know, right. You know, so it was fun. Uh, and you're a guy who loves to watch and, and play yeah. the angles. I've seen that. I saw, I was just, we, we put up a highlight of you from uh, against Kansas City from, I believe it was 87 or 88, reading the backdoor play and jumping in front of the pass, a diving jump. And, and it was like, well, that's not even counted as a save, but you stopped a sure goal. So reading those angles, always such a, uh, you have to study it, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if you, today you can take a, a video, you know, videotape those days, but videotape was different. We could not do that like today. You know, internet TV, you register, you, you play it back, sound everything, you know, perfect. Yeah. And you can adjust yourself with a video too. So where, where did I do wrong? Those days, in, in a stone age, you know, I would say, <laughs> when a ball was square, you know, <laughs> I would say that way, it was no technology there. So, you know, you have to just remember. Yeah. And if you play the game, you remember and try to win it in over night, you know, when the dream comes back, you know, a nightmare, and you work it up. And, you know, this, you have to work it and practice it and make sure you filter out the bad and just, you know, do the right thing, special and good, because so fast, every direction, everybody's speeding up. TikTok too can be there, you know, and great players played those days, you know, the Brazilians, the Argentine, the Hugos, the the Americans, you know, the, so United Nations was, don't even talk about Wichita, the whole team was from Holland and Denmark and, right. you know, it's a tough to, thing to do. Uh, absolutely. Now, I asked uh, our fans on Instagram and Twitter if they had any questions for you, and there was one mm -hmm. question that kept coming back. So okay. I get to be the fun one to ask it, which is about okay. those hands. The, ah. You didn't wear no. gloves. Now, you, you know, did later in your career. Sometimes, yes, sometimes, yeah. no. The picture right behind you, you're wearing gloves. But yeah. I've got some great highlights yeah. of you playing with no gloves. Two physical players, Bronco Sagoda and Steve Petra. I wouldn't want to be in the middle of that war. Petra really giving it to Joe Rudy, the official, for not seeing that play. Here's Katsuka shooting. Oh, what a save by Zoltan Toth on a rising rocket off the hard right foot of Tasso Katsukas. So we're still scoreless as you watch Katsukas let one fly. We'll put you right in goal and see if you want to play in this league. Look Zoltan at that shot. Toth just getting that left palm of the hand up at the last instant to parry that ball over the, the glass and yeah. dodge a bullet. What was on your, what were you thinking? Think about if you are a, a surgeon, you know, think about your, your finger is nothing replacing your old, old skin, right? Yeah. You know, so I believe my hand will catch the ball, not a glove. Now think about it, we played in Uipesh, Uipesh in uh, Real Santander in Spain, in one of the third division club. Heavy rain, 60,000 people. Somebody, the coach told me before a game, Zoli, put on a glove. You yeah. know, because this will be very heavy, a rain, and you know, storm, everything. So I put on a glove, first time. They took the shot from a back midfield, so I go to the 16 yard line, I always go, call the ball, mine, I go up with my hand, I say, a glove will catch it. The ball opened my hand, ah. goes through, roll through the goal line and stops, not even touching the goal line. <laughs> 60,000 people laughing on me, can you imagine? Oh. I took on this glove, I throw it in the net, you know, everybody laughing again, and I don't give up any goal. We won two to one, but I get everybody who wanna come close to me. The end of the coach. And since that, I don't put on an indoor too. In practice in, in Nostal Coliseum, where we practice and Branco Segota took some shot, I put on a socks just to save my fingers, you know, because yeah. he had some shot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you know, 
Uh, later on, you will sport, you know, the uh, a glove company, a sporting mm -hmm. goods company, they support me. So they made a contract with me and to really, we give you five grand. I say, okay, you know, I'm putting, uh, what the hell, you know, <laughs> I can close my eye and I'm going to go, you know, if I have to, <laughs> for money. Yeah. I put it on and it was a bestseller glove. It was very good, I still have it. And uh, since that, I wear the glove. But in Cleveland, I broke my ring finger because I wanted to punch the ball and the Kenny Dart would take a full shot and hit my hand. If mm -hmm. I'm sweaty and just a hand will slid off, but the glove broke my hand. So that was the first time in glove I broke my hand. And see, everyone else wears gloves to protect their hands. But yeah. we get the straight scoop from Zoltan Toth. It was That's the glove right. that broke his head. He Cash. Had <laughs> Cash. <laughs> Unbelievable. Cash dogs. <laughs> that is a, that's a great story. I, I'm so glad I heard it. Um, another very interesting aspect of your career, especially your soccer career, was that you were always generally in a timeshare. Ron Newman had a thing, right? He wanted mm -hmm. to have not just one great goalie. He wanted to have two great goalies for a 48-54 game season. Mm -hmm. the, the length of seasons you guys would play, never mind five and seven game playoffs, where it would then be. Zoli started game one, Jimmy Gorsuch's in there for game two and back and forth and elimination or closeout games. It's just going to be, you know, uh, your day on the schedule. How did, how did you react to having always both a great teammate, but also that competition? Yeah. So, okay. It comes back from New York too, because Chef Messing and I was rotating. Right. And when you play so many games, every second, third day is a game plus travel. It's kind of harsh on a goal, especially when you get hurt. You know, yeah. um, my first time when I, you know, I, I shared a goal here with a uh, Victor. Victor came in in a Los Angeles game in home. Now, my, I, I had a flu. I had high temperature. I was dying. I was in a bench. And here you go. You know, I have a goalie mate who can jump in. I did yeah. it many, many times with uh, Jimmy Gorsuch, you know, when the performance or injury or naturally we were rotating so we say we win, i win this one next time is yours because you're fresh and you can go out and do it right and the, the coach decision too if you have a winning streak maybe play you because you are on a run but if you have get hurt and uh, tell you uh, this alternation saved my career longer because i could get hurt on any time if i'm tired and i go into the battle and i lose it because yeah. there is a, a bone to bone and, you know, head to head and, you know, strong shots. We did it in, in St. Louis too with uh, Slobo Ilyes. So I had a very good time with uh, Shep Messing and, and Jimmy Gorsak and Victor and, and Slobo. And I, I'm not regretting any time that I shared with. I'm not jealous about that game. If it means I'm happy because we are in a winning streak. Now is yours. And we went to what? 18, 19 games, winning straight. That's very hard to do. Absolutely. And it's just incredible, though. You, you say those names, Zoli. I mean, yeah. Shep Messing and Jimmy Gorsuch and Victor mm -hmm. Nagera and Slobo. I mean, and yourself. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the top five all-time goalkeepers. Uh, I mean, you could throw in a Scott Manning or a couple other guys. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are five of the best, at least eight goalkeepers in the history of indoor soccer. So one interesting thing about that, maybe you would agree, you never had kind of a bad teammate to alternate with where it might have been a problem. You always had a great teammate to alternate yeah. with. But we played against very good goalies, such as Scott Manning. I used to coach him in, in Pennsylvania Stoners, by the way, because I was suspended. And I was a goalie coach there, helping him out. Then Alan Meyer, you know, don't forget yeah. that it's big, good goalies. Oh, yeah. So when we played indoor soccer, you know, David Bursch, we played one game in uh, Pittsburgh, like four overtimes, two games. You know, I mean, I, you know, it's very hard to keep your, you know, tension up, you know, for, for, for six hours. Yeah. And it was midnight or one o'clock in the morning, somebody scored a winning goal. You know, so the goalie was very important to be fresh and, you know, ready for a game. No injuries, no jams. No ribs, uh, you know, like I retired, you know, with three broken ribs. That was yeah. the worst thing to me. It, it can happen anytime. You can right. collide anytime. And if you're not fresh, it comes. And look at today, my knee. Julie just told me today, Zoli, 
why don't you put on a, a knee pads? I always told you, put on a knee pads. So look like Alan Meyer, you know, to protect yourself. Right, first. right. Tape fingers, you know. I told him, I would slow myself down, you know. I had a built-in knee pad on my pants, so that was enough for me. But today, I wish I put on a... <laughs> Because I have a total knee replacement and I yeah. promoted to everybody and walking or I walked out to the hospital and I did it. So, but uh, maybe I would be much healthier if I'm, you know, uh, protecting myself more. Well, I, I certainly didn't mean to leave out Alan Mayer, who I've been cutting a lot because I've been doing these games of San Diego, Kansas City when you were in one net and Alan was in the other. And I mean, they were, it almost seemed like you guys were trying to outdo each other some yeah. nights yeah. in terms of the acrobatic saves and i mean mayor could give as good as anyone he had a big body and he would just throw it around and he won it you know that all-star game what you see behind me that's a kansas city all-star game he won it you know so after the game we're flying home and we're playing cards on a on a on a on an airplane and we talk about the game i said you know what that goal was an art what they did you know when they chipped the ball over and you know, Kim Runtvet came with a full volley from a thing and upper me. I say, I saved that goal. I saved that goal. But Dennis Macron was front of me and pushed his knee and then higher than it was supposed to be. Mm. And bang, that closed on the game. And he was so happy because, you know, he was in a winning team. <laughs> uh, we had a great time. We had full house, you know, enjoy. That's what missing today, MASL, the All Star game. Well, I don't know if you heard, uh, they asked. It's kind of funny you just bring that up because the league announced today, as we record this uh, on a Thursday, October 22nd, uh, mm. that they are mm. going to have an all-star game in December in Kansas City. And uh, given that they don't have right now a, a real path to get our teams on the field uh, mm. in the pandemic, but they are going to have an all-star game uh, in Kansas mm. City in December, West versus East. And while that doesn't replace a regular season, uh, I think you'd agree. It's a great thing for us to bring back and for the MASL yeah. to have that showcase uh, and an opportunity yeah. for different markets to have that great showcase. Yes, yes, definitely. You know, the, um, I cannot say will be a full house because the pandemic, but will be a big interest. Everybody tune on and, and watch it. You know, like when you guys are doing the broadcast, you, know, you can find it in the internet. You know the game is going on. No matter what, I could watch it in Hungary. You know, yeah. sometimes I do. You know, I say, ooh, send it, the link, you know, to our people, and they tune in and they say, oh, that was a good game, you know. So uh, the importance is the um, technology went so far. You can watch it. They can put on a sound, okay, full house, and you can hear the, you know, you know, it's bullshit, nobody in a, in a stadium. But they put their sound on, wow, you know, the, the corner and, you know, the excitement in it. I hope this will go away. The 2020 is the hardest and worst year in my career. Um, one day this will be over and we will enjoy you know, all of these um, games again in the stands and, you know, get my uh, food and enjoy my son. You know, how you're making a save then I can say, you see, that's my son. <laughs> oh, man. Three-time keeper of the year. I know you were very proud of what... Uh, young, young, young Chris has been able to do. Just a couple other things for you, uh, Zoli. Another thing that really stood out to me watching and researching the games from the 80s was the difference in the rule changes. A and most of those had to do with your position. The defenders passing the ball back to you with their feet, and you could just mm -hmm. grab it, pick it up, and throw it. Um, both early years with Mayer and with yourself, it seemed like it was very much a strategy to send it back to you and have you chuck the wing, have you kind of throw a fly pattern down the left wall or the right wall. Uh, and if it didn't work, chuck, kick it back to you and you can pick it up and you can do it again. The other one is that little ticky talk between you're standing there in the zone, mm -hmm. the defenders one step out, you pass back and forth and back and forth mm -hmm. until someone finally comes up to you. Mm -hmm. You might waste 45 seconds going back and forth. I had one mm -hmm. with you and Kevin Crow. The fans are booing in Kansas City because you're just like, boop, boop, yeah. boop, 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 until and waiting. It's boring. it's boring, Greg. That's boring. You know, you want to see excitement. Right. So you want to filter this out. They should make another uh, rule change. Okay, you can pass it back two times and no more than that. Or something like that. Or the bad passing and not pick up a ball, I think that's good because um, this is soccer. So, yeah. you know, so many times you would roll the ball out, the ball comes back, roll, pick up, roll the It's boring. It's not um, 
not effective. So you, you cannot um, attack with that, you know, you know everybody already marked. Uh, I used to uh, send the ball if I saved the shot, you see, because everybody was positioned and Jungle was always cherry picking, such as yeah. uh, Frank Tayu, you know, for uh, Chris. Right. So you can find the player if you catch the ball. If you deflect it, somebody else has it, but no such a thing like I roll it up, come back, because they already marked up. There is no no time for the guy, you know, to be free or anything. And, you know, it's boring. The, the referees, we, we changed this game so much from the start. The yeah. ball was bigger, you know, the ball was smaller, all kind of things that are just to getting more goals. Now, if you steal the time to back passing the goal, goalie and, you know, back again, and it's so boring, they have to control maybe a little bit of a rule change. You know, how many times you can pass it back, you yeah. know? And, uh, you know, if over the red line, you know, the same thing. And I think, I think that the league will, will take a look at and uh, they will make the adjustments. Yeah, a very interesting perspective. I really appreciate that. Uh, okay, let's get to kind of the end of your career, right? Because you were with the Soccers through 1990. You mentioned it. You spent a couple of years in St. Louis with Slobo, uh, mm -hmm. 91, 92. And then at the end of 1992 is the end of, at that time, MSL. They dropped the I for those last two years mm -hmm. uh, of your career. Uh, and, and the league folds. Did players see this coming in other words the last three four years of the league what was the talk in from players market to market in terms of the instability of the misl yeah you know um when when you don't have no guarantee contracts and uh, injury guarantees and anybody can get um, um, I get knocked out, you know, with the, the three broken ribs. I try to come back and I know I can't because something was not right. And uh, I had to uh, quit. And uh, um, then, then you find your way, you know, coaching. I had to uh, run to a goalkeeper because my, <laughs> Phil Salvaggio was my goalie. Come yeah. He was a goalie coach. You know, he played for a team, you know, he has, I love the game so much. And now look, look at him, you know, I own the club because he loves the game so much. So we, when we fall out of the game, like in St. Louis, I know I will stay with it. You know, we, we dream about the games and I, um, I try to um, create another uh, goalie and look at Chris, the goalie, you can't say that, you know, but uh, Chris is my um, um, son and yeah. I'm uh, so proud, you know, playing the game and he don't want to play outdoor. You see that outdoor is boring for him. He plays beach soccer, summertime, right. and indoor soccer, win winter time. And when I was in Hungary, I tell you what, Chris had, uh, we were losing, you know, he played for one of the Hungarian club, Gyöngyös, and um, three to two, and was at 30 seconds to go. And we have a goal kick. And I say to a friend of my last loss, who used to be a sweeper for the other team in San Diego, I say, watch, Chris will score a goal. So he put down a ball and he strike as he usually, you know, hitting it, hit a uh, sand on the top and bounced into the goal. He tied up the game. Oh my so God. So everybody, you know, wow. You know, he had the carry him out to the shoulder and they wanted to know that time. I wanted to say, uh, because his technique, you know, he played indoor. Now, you know, the look Nick Pereira, you know, when he, they pull that scissor kick, that's, we can't wait for that, you know, to somebody do a, a magical shot. You know, he played in Tahiti, he played in Paraguay for a U.S. national team. And those days in Hungary too, you know, when the U.S. national team landed later, he played for U.S. Then, and they beat Japan, Czech Republic, Hungary, and they won a championship there. I was more proud than anybody. So I could give my you know, coaching to him um, naturally. So now, um, you know, he was good in Ontario and I'm still, you know, Ontario was a good team. And, you know, who knows if the pandemic is not there, maybe they will be do very well with the playoffs, you know, with the tires and you know, everybody is just, just uh, gel there. But now I uh, look like Chris will play for uh, uh, Nick Pereira up in uh, Tahoe. Yeah. Right. So, Will be interesting game against Sakers against Ontario. You see, there are rivalries, not just one team like uh, Arrows. Yeah. What kind of Mickey Mouse league is when one team wins all the time? Right. So the other teams have to be strong to get a good league. Don't 
we don't want to beat uh, Phoenix uh, 11 to 1 or something. We want to be uh, competitive on a league. So yeah. that's why good to players, you know, spread and make the money and, and doing good in different cities, just like Kansas City did, like uh, St. Louis did, like Cleveland, you know, this is LA, yeah. or now Tacoma and, you know, San Diego, yeah. Las Vegas. You know, well, we like you know, to you, do this. You, you make a great point, Zoltan, in, in terms of, and this is something our previous Legend series was, was with Randy Hahn, your guys' longtime announcer, mm -hmm. right? One of the great voices in the MISL. And he made the point that the soccer's, in a small way, the soccer's contributed to killing the MISL mm -hmm. by, by winning every championship save one. And of course, before the soccer's began their dominance, it was your team, the Arrows, who won every championship. And then the soccer's won every championship. And so, as you said, now with a more spread out league where there aren't two behemoths and a bunch of also rands, there's more of a chance, I guess, for uh, that NFL word of parity where everyone comes into the year thinking at least they have a chance. Yes, yes, I agree. And, you know, the, the, uh, the fans, the local fans won't leave. Like if you go out to the game and you cheering for, let's say, Wichita and they're destroying your team, you may not want to go out to see it again because depressing, no? Yeah. But if they have a good team and they're competitive, they win the game and they big time winning the last seconds or something, but people have always remember, like I do, you know, those goals, then they will come back and they will watch it and, you know, they will be um, racing for a championship, such as Baltimore, you know, always, or Milwaukee. You know, the team's coming out, you know, I can't wait for the game, you know, when it's starting because I know Baltimore and Milwaukee game will be a rivalry. Yeah. Just like here when you can't wait for a San Diego and Tacoma game. Right, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, well, Zoltan, thank you so much. This has been a ton of fun for me. Uh, like I said, I've been kind of fanboying over my old Zoltan Toth highlights for so long. And uh, there'll come a day where that Toth banner will hang over your son again. Someday in the future, I dream. But uh, in the interim, we have to try and get a few past him. Uh, but it, it's been a, a really fun interview. I thank you so much for the time. And I'm sure soccer fans everywhere watching and tuning in uh, share uh, in me saying thanks a lot. Oh, great. Thank you very much. And, you know, just keep up a good work. You did fantastic in the technology field. I want to see those games. I want to hear that. Go! Save! <laughs> <laughs> That's what they used to say to me. Save! Oh. <laughs> Brian with all these guys, you know, they tease me still. Who touched it, you know? <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Zoltan Toth, legendary goalkeeper, retired numbers, soccer's legend. Our legend series continues. My name is Craig Elson. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will catch you on our next legend series episode here on Soccer's Overtime. Talk to you then.